Well, thank you for being with me for a little bit under an hour. And uh, thank you, Carrie, because it's thanks to you that, uh, that I am here. And today uh, we were brought, Mary, my wife and I, to uh, the mud flats to take pictures of the horseshoe crabs, which I was very eager to get for the upcoming field guide. Now, the subject of, uh, of this evening is underwater photography and biology. Now, first of all, who was the crazy man who thought that one could uh, take pictures other than by drawing or painting? So let's first get into a bit of history. I think it can be a little bit more in focus, probably. Yeah, that's better. And uh, that was a Frenchman called Nietz, and he made this is the very first photography ever taken uh, back in, as you can see, in 1826. That's almost 200 years ago. It was a very complicated chemical process, especially for the times, but he managed uh, exposure time something like two hours. <laughs> and uh, yes, it makes you laugh now, but. This, this, was, this was quite something. I mean, what would the world be today without photography and everything that came after that, cinematography, that TV, etc. And what is even more amazing is that a mere 30 years later, an Englishman thought, if one can take photography, one could, should also be able to do photography underwater. But he was very much motivated for this because this, he was a lawyer, William Thompson, but he was an amateur marine biologist, published about sea anemones. And what you see here is the very first underwater picture ever taken. Well, it doesn't look great, does it? <laughs> and uh, the, the, the caption at the time said he gave a, a, a talk for the British or Royal, probably, Photographic Society. And he said, well, the camera got drowned because the watertight housing that he built out of wood and glass was finally not that watertight. And he said, well, what you can see is the algae that, that are growing uh, on the sea bottom. And uh, you can see the surface of the sea. Uh, no, this was a drowned photographical plate. What you see is the collodion just flowing up. This is not an underwater picture. It was taken in the water, but you don't see anything. But at least he tried. And then, about 40 years later, came along a very uh, odd duo. Two men, Louis Bouton, Frenchman, on the left, and Joseph David, another Frenchman, on the right. Louis Bouton was a marine biologist, a real one, a professional one. He taught at Sorbonne University. Uh, he graduated on bivalves. And he uh, was one of the first people on this planet to study marine life underwater with diving gear. You know, the helmet thing with the glass plates that were screwed in. And uh, with two people pumping on the surface and bringing uh, air to the, to the helmet. And he gave a very neat description what it was like to be underwater. And his writing says, this was so amazing, but you cannot give an accurate description of it. What one would need would be photography to show the others what it is like. And that was the motivation. And then he was lucky enough to work in, the, in a marine laboratory, one of the oldest uh, in France and one of the oldest in, in, on, on Earth, Laboratoire Arago, which was founded in 1882. By the way, it's where I did my PhD as well. And he met the, uh, the mechanical worker of the, uh, of the laboratory. And so to the left was the brain, and to the right was the handyman. But the handyman turned out to be very, very, very important. And this is the first underwater camera that was ever constructed. A brass box with inside an ordinary camera with plates was no film yet in those days. And 
Here are the world's first succeeded underwater photographies. And here you can really see algae growing on the rocks, the sea surface, rocks on the bottom. And here, for those who know the Mediterranean Sea, this is Mediterranean Sea grass, Posidonia, which I know quite well. And then he had an amazing idea. He said, why don't I construct, because the, the problems are with pressure, why don't I construct a camera where the water can just flow inside? By that time, plates were made that could be waterproofed with varnish. And he, uh, he invented a camera that would be flooded. The only problem was, was the optics, because a glass lens in water is less effective than a glass lens in air because of the refractive index. And so this, this camera never worked. And then he got to his number three camera, quite a bulky one, watertight again, and so bulky that to transport it on the sea bottom, they, uh, they had a cask by Newell's where the laboratory is situated. It's also wine growing country, so casks were easy to get by. And uh, so they filled uh, a casket with air and could hoist the camera underwater to place it <laughs> further on. And since there were so many casks around, he also invented 1893 the same underwater flesh. Now, how was it made? Inside, you have a mixture of air and rich with oxygen. Over there is a glass uh, bell, and inside the glass bell is a little uh, alcohol lamp burning, and then he squeezes a rubber pair and injects um, uh, magnesium powder in the flame. Flash it goes. And the progress was quite spectacular. His first pictures, their first pictures, Bhutan and Dhabi, their first pictures were from 1893 and they worked until 1899. So in, in six years they did it all. They got the exposure times down from a few minutes to parts of a second, so they could make instantaneous pictures, moving things. And just to prove that this was an underwater picture, he took a dissecting tray and painted photography submarine, underwater photography in it, and took the picture of seagrass and the panel saying that this is underwater photography. And then we get some amazing pictures. They, were, they have become very famous. Mm -hmm. This Meet Louis Bouton swimming underwater, uh, photographed by Joseph David, who was in his diving gear, and Meet Joseph David in his diving gear, pictured by Louis Bouton. So they took pictures of each other and uh, had lots of fun. By then, <coughs> word got around. This, 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 this hit world press. I mean, from, from not only in France, in the United States it was published. And some cartoonists at the time made drawings of this strange, froggy Frenchman taking pictures underwater and taking pictures, of course, of ladies in swimming wear. And then David said, OK, we can do that. And he did not take ladies in swimming wear, but men in swimming wear, and showed this is underwater photography. And in 1900, 1900, the first book on underwater photography was published by Bhutan. Now, Bhutan was motivated by biology. That was the motivation. You wanted to show the underwater world. A little bit later in England, there's another guy, amateur biologist, uh, very much into fishing, and he wanted to show the fish's perspective. How do fish perceive the underwater world? And he went to the seaside, had this semi-emerged camera that you can see on the left, took wonderful pictures of plays and rays and things like that, and then he constructed a pool in his property and in the pool was a kind of aquarium, a dry one, with air. And he sat in the, in, in the observing box and filled the, 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 the pool around him and 
made many uh, underwater creatures perform in front of his lens. Like this here. You have a freshwater bass and you have a heron. This is where the first surface is. This is the underwater part, this is the reflected part. He also made the first um, color pictures. I mean, we are in 1918, okay? This is 100 years ago almost. You have a pike, you have waterfowl, I don't know what, what the name is. And so we are slowly getting there. Underwater photography becomes quite performing, which does not mean that all the time the underwater photographer is sitting physically underwater himself or herself. But this is certainly not true for Hans Haas, Austrian, who was an amazing diver. He was one of the pioneers of, uh, of diving. And he became famous before Jacques Cousteau, of whom you have all heard, became famous. But he preceded Jacques Yves Cousteau by about five or ten years, doing exactly the same things that Cousteau would perform a little bit later. So this is pre-war, 1937, 1958. Uh, Cousteau started making his first underwater pictures in the 1940s. And Hans Haas was an amazing photographer, and he we, go, we get the heron again with the reflection in the, in the water surface. It's quite a fascinating thing, the water surface. And Hans Haas was also a very good uh, technician. Well, I don't know why there's one picture. It doesn't want to show itself. Well, there are several more that are not coming, the mm -hmm. computer says. I don't know why. Anyway, Hans Haas develops the uh, Rolly Marin, which is an underwater housing, watertight housing, for a very famous camera in those days, a 2i reflex camera. And this, this was, until the 1970s, the underwater housing for professional underwater photographers. And guess what? Hans Haas was a marine biologist. It's the, the, the whole history of underwater photography almost was brought about, at least in the beginning years, by biologists. Now, I am afraid that we are not going to get the next That was the preceding one. No, you saw it for a short while, then... Why? Why, why, why do we do this? I don't know. Let me try this. I, I have had the same problem from time to time. Not, it's not going to prove, I have exactly the same. <coughs> Sorry about this. Have you ever had this problem yourself? Or, no? yeah. or you could convert it very quickly to key. That's true, yeah. A PDF, PDF, I don't know. Yeah, you cannot do slides. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.